In today's video, I will be finding the 10 most perfect extreme demons in Geometry Dash. I've searched and reviewed over 1000 plus extreme demons to find the best of the best. I use a very strict criteria to help me out with my selections, which includes many things like decoration, gameplay, enjoyment, effects, theming, and originality. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, I'll be now publishing every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the YouTube channel. Make sure to like button down below to show your support along with subscribing to see all videos that will come out every single week. Thanks so much and enjoy the video. Starting this list off at number 10, we have Goldcrest Palace. This placement may be a surprise for some of you as it uses 1.9 decoration, which often gets criticized a lot more than people realize. But in my opinion, this level is just a masterpiece. I personally don't think 1.9 decoration is a bad idea to go and execute, especially like this because it's extremely original and isn't a 1.9 remake or a boring 1.9 mega collab. Goldcrest Palace is not only unique for creating its own theme, but also looks better than most other modern day extreme demons that come out now with only using 1.9 limitations. Grenade of Tacos did a great job making each part look distinct while maintaining overall cohesion, which a lot of extreme demons today lack in that quality. As for the gameplay, it is pretty learning with a lot of input scattered throughout from start to finish, with the addition of multiple duels that take some time getting used to. These additions of the gameplay make it an enjoyable yet challenging experience, which is the reason why it is beloved by a lot of people who have played it and completed it. The community's immense enjoyment highlights how well this level plays, showcasing its overall excellent balance. Overall, Crocus Palace is a great way to start off this video and I'm very proud to be placing it at number 10 for the most perfect extreme you've been in the game. Next at number 9, I have one of my personal favorite extremes in Storming Summit. This level is just spectacular when taking all qualities into account. I understand if you were to complain about it not being all that original from being from the game Celeste, but honestly with all the fascinating qualities of everything else, it triumphs that category completely which makes it number 9 on my list. I just can't leave it out. Regarding it from being Celeste, the level appeal and immersive gameplay makes this a one in a kind of experience to go through as a player. It's quite long with being over 2 minutes in length, which creates a lot of suspense and intensity that creates a very rewarding and playful experience. The gameplay is extremely challenging with changes in game modes and speeds, which later on introduces one of the most consistent and enticing duels this game has to offer. Despite the decoration taking some assets from Celeste, there's no question that it looks phenomenal as it's one of the best looking extremes in the game. In terms of enjoyment, it has mainly received positive reviews and is a favorite amongst players who are looking for a new personal hardest extreme demon. Like I said before, when everything comes together, this level was revolutionary and is something worth playing if you're good enough to play it. Which is the reason why I have Storming Summit at number 9. Moving on to number 8, I have The Cellar Path. The Cellar Path is a solo extreme demon released by Jam Attack, which holds the title as one of the most original extreme demons in the game, in my opinion. The level features a dark, eerie theme that simulates exploring a creepy underground cellar, which makes it a phenomenal experience to go through with its immersive theming. For me personally, a good theming in a level absolutely amplifies the player's experience, which may make the player feel suspenseful, intense, or satisfied. In this video, most of these are completely unique and exquisite theming, which is the reason why I consider them quite literally perfect. Now when we talk about the decoration, it completely matches and obeys the theming and ambiance it is trying to go for with it being really consistent from start to finish. There are different sections that hold different decoration styles along with different effects and color palettes to make the experience remain engaging throughout. Gateway holds a lot of muscle memory elements that can make it pretty challenging for some people, like a lot of unorthodox ships and duels, but a lot of people will argue that it makes the gameplay interesting and is a positive element to have in the level, which I personally can agree with. I believe that this is the best jam attack level and that is the reason why you see in this video, I think it's incredible and all across the board with all categories, clarifying it as a masterpiece, making it number 8 on today's list. Transitioning to number 7, I have a hidden gem in Hopping Over Puddles. Hopping Over Puddles is another solo creation by a guy named Jace27Blaze, which is not only some of his best work, but one of the best extreme events in the game. A lot of people do not know this level causing a lack of recognition that is really shaming given the fact of how good this level really is. Just like the rest of the levels so far talked about in today's video, this level is completely solid all across the board with qualities that are visually inspiring for players to play. 
unlike most levels in today's video, hopping over puddles is relatively simple, with only 24,000 objects, which in my opinion speaks volumes to how simple but elegant this level looks when it comes down to the decoration. Hopping over puddles is a beginner extreme demon that uses timings for its overall difficulty. The issue with most timing extreme demons nowadays is finding a consistent balance in difficulty, because it is the most tedious type of gameplay to try to balance correctly. Although, hopping over puddles is a level that I find extremely balanced for being timing oriented. Along with that, the overall gameplay is surprisingly unique and enticing with there being challenging but distinctive gameplay, which creates a lot of satisfaction for the player. If you stuck around this far into the video, please go give this level a try. I promise you it will be one of the best levels you'll ever play, especially for the people who are looking for their first ever extreme demon. Overall, Hopping Over Puddles is another great addition to this list, placing it at number 7 on my list for today's video. Next at number 6, I have Empyrean. Empyrean by Kivi is a detailed masterpiece, which I really felt put Kivi's name as one of the best and most unique creators this game has to offer. Even though Totem was a great level that Kivi released, Empyrean just raised the standard so much higher with even more detailed decoration and interesting gameplay. Empyrean highlights Kivi's exceptional skill in creating complex and visually impressive levels that challenge the limits of the game. The decoration in the level acts as if Kivi made it from a painting using an art brush for its details, making a very unique taste that many people enjoy, like myself. The song selection perfectly matches the intended atmosphere, which is another element that separates some extremes from the rest. Ever since I saw Totem a decent while ago, I have always been a fan of his work after reviewing his collab parts and creations. With the release of Empyrean, I think it perfectly sums up him as a creator in this game, creating authentic and stunning visuals that make the player feel immersed into the level, which creates an enjoyment feeling that is almost impossible to achieve in any other way in this game. The gameplay remains intriguing and remotely balanced throughout, solidifying as one of the most consistent streams in all qualities in the game. That explains the reason why I have it at number 6. Breaking into the top 5, we have Cytokinesis at number 5. Personally, I consider this to be the Cherry Team's best creation. The Alien Laboratory theme is strikingly unique, and the team's execution of the concept is flawless. From the intricate decorations to the captivating effects and engaging gameplay, Cytokinesis radiates an intense energy that truly immerses players into the experience. What elevates it even further is the detailed crafted soundtrack made specifically for the level, demonstrating the creator's dedication to achieving the perfect synchronization between the music and the gameplay. Every aspect of Cytokinesis feels purposeful and cohesive, making it a standout creation in Jump Shash and a testament to Cherry Team's talent and creativity. The gameplay is extremely satisfying and enjoyable, but the duels towards the second half plays to enhance the overall flow and rhythm, with vibrant colors and details bringing the Alien Laboratory theme come to life in a way that is both visually stunning and immersive. Not only is it the most enjoyed Cherry Team level, but it is one of the most enjoyed extremes in the game with one of the highest enjoyment ratings that there is. Despite it being a Deuteronomy verification, it is known to be a very balanced level which is a good reason why it is so enjoyed by a lot of people. Sodom Kinesis serves as a great level to start out the top 5 for this video, very deserving of a spot and should be recognized as one of the best extreme demons in the game. Starting from here, I honestly think at the number 4 spot we are getting to the territory where it is just quite literally perfect extreme demons. Uh, you know, perfect obviously is very subjective like I said earlier in the video, but if you don't like these levels, then I, I can't really help you, because there's nothing wrong with them at all. Um, and that's why they're going to be in top four in today's video, and yeah, I think they're pretty much perfect in all qualities. So it's going to be hard to beat these. With that being said, at number four, we have Clock Tower. Clock Tower is a recent addition to the Jump Shash scene. Unlike many other Extreme Demons featured in today's video, Clock Tower debuted with a 2.2 update, evident from its subtle camera movements and integrated sound effects, which enhances the overall experience. Clock Tower, crafted by the Purgatory team, stands out for its clean decoration and unique theming, immersing players in the ambiance of a grand clock tower. Despite being a collab, the decoration is one of the most consistent levels I've ever seen that holds this type of style, which is another reason why this level easily separates itself from all other extremes. The gameplay is really good as well from the innovative click seek and satisfaction pace that it has. Additionally, it is known to be a beginner extreme demon, which makes this a great choice to do as your first extreme demon. Similarly to Hopping Over Puddles, Clock Tower suffers from a lack of recognition. Despite being rated during the 2.2 update, which presented an opportunity for a higher level rating, Clock Tower received only an epic rating, leaving many players questioning the demon rate system and fairness. 
This difference causes frustration and leads to important talks about how the demon system should work, which could be a good topic for another video. Overall, Clock Tower needs more recognition, but does not deny the fact that this is worthy of being noted as one of the best extreme demons in the game with its outstanding qualities, making it place at number 4. Advancing to number 3, we have an underrated extreme in Neurostasis. This level is simply one of the most enjoyable extreme demons in the game, and is beloved by quite literally almost everyone. Neurostasis, which I believe is the latest released extreme demon by Kiwi Penguin, is easily his best. The most outstanding quality of this level is the progression that it has from start to finish. While the decoration is quite simple at first, it gradually becomes more messy and chaotic, creating a very eerie atmosphere that makes the level incredibly special. As expected from one of the most beloved extremes, the gameplay is extremely solid. It is much more complex compared to the average extreme, and requires serious time to understand what to do and how to do it consistently. For the gameplay, it features learning, ship, and timings, and goes through all types of speeds throughout the level. I wasn't joking when I said it's one of the most enjoyable extreme demons. Neurosis stands around the top 10 in enjoyment averages, making it stand out really well from the 1000 plus extreme demons that this game has to offer. Neurostasis stands as a testament to Kiwi Penguin's ability to craft not just a challenging level, but an immersive and memorable experience that continues to impress players and is the reason why I have it in my top 3. At the number 2 spot, I personally have my current hardest in Proto Flicker by Ewop and more. This level is incredibly appealing to the eyes, with its swift movements and incredibly satisfying gameplay. The gameplay features a lot of variety, incorporating almost every game mode in the game. While many people think the wave at the pre drop is the hardest part, I don't actually think that's the case. It is a muscle memory intensive wave that really requires time to achieve the desired consistency. Once mastered, it becomes something you can pass fairly often when playing from the start. Protoflicker stands around the midpoint of Extreme Demons in terms of difficulty. As for the decoration, everyone involved did a phenomenal job of maintaining cohesive theming while ensuring each part looks distinct yet harmonious with the others. The visual transitions are smooth and aesthetically pleasing, putting the cherry on top of the cake. The vibrant colors and intricate designs add to the level's appeal, making each attempt visually enjoyable to play. Protoflicker is not just a test of skill, but a feast for the eyes, offering an immersive experience for the players in this game. I might have a slight bias due to it being my hardest, but understand that this level is just insane. When everything comes together, it basically is the perfect level in this game. And it definitely needs to be known, and that's why I have it in today's video. Um, but it isn't more perfect than our number one spot. Finally, at number one, in my opinion, to what the closest level to a perfect extreme demon is Apollo 11. Statistically, it has the highest average enjoyment rating of any level in the game, which speaks volumes about its quality and appeal. What makes Apollo 11 so exceptional is its ability to achieve incredible satisfaction with seemingly simple elements. The level masterfully combines intuitive gameplay mechanics with elegant design, creating an experience that is both challenging and deeply rewarding. Apollo's 11 gameplay is meticulously crafted, offering a perfect balance between difficulty and playability. Each section flows seamlessly into the next, ensuring that players remain engaged and motivated throughout their attempts. The learning curve is well paced, allowing players to steadily improve without feeling overwhelmed. This balance is a key factor when you talk about the widespread popularity and a high enjoyment rating that it has. Visually, Apollo 11 is a masterpiece. The level's decoration is stunning yet not too overly complex allowing players to focus on the gameplay while still being mesmerized by the aesthetics. The color palette and visual effects are thoughtfully chosen to enhance the overall experience, making each playthrough a feast for the eyes. In summary, Apollo 11 stands as the pinnacle of Extreme Demons due to its perfect blend of enjoyable gameplay and captivating visuals. It manages to be both simple yet profound, providing an unparalleled experience that continues to delight and challenge players. Its status as the highest rated level in terms of enjoyment is well deserved, solidifying its place, in my opinion, as the most perfect extreme demon in Geometry Dash history. Well that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you hit the like button below to show your support. Uh, consider subscribing as well because this video took a very long time to make and any type of support from y'all would be greatly appreciated. But other than that, that'll be it for me, GYT signing out, and I'll see y'all in the next video.